Welcome to the Game Dev TV Community Podcast. We got Bryant and Ricardo, episode fourteen. Type trials should be the title. Mm-hmm. All right. And the episode is about negativity in the uh, game industry. Sometimes you get those people who say they can make games better than you, or they'll just talk trash about the game that you worked hard for like the last maybe seven years. You know, no, no big deal, right? The average day to day of anyone who works with the public, really. Yeah, pretty much everyone. Yeah. Before we before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to Ben and his team for the successful Kickstarter for the Mass for Games too. That yeah. concluded today, so start Plus, seeing uh, content in the near future. Mm-hmm. Plus a thousand student no backers, and yeah. um, twenty plus thousand pounds. Yeah, I think fifteen new lifetime members also signed up for it or something. So really? fifteen or twelve. So. Oh, were you on the Twitch call? Yeah, I was on the tail end of it. Nice. Was there Rick there too? No, it was just Ben. Oh, I thought Rick was joining. I think he was going to, but I, I didn't pick up the beginning of it. So. Oh. Uh, who knows what time it is in Australia? Yeah, it's, I think it's really early when he does the calls. Yeah. Yeah, because I know the last one, he was like, when Rick wakes up, he'll join. Exactly. Yeah. All right, well, let's get right into it. How do you guys handle negativity? Well, it's important, first of all, to know that most people are annoying. So may not really, be the best way to address your negativity. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's true. Yeah, you know they suck. So you have to learn to ignore people. You can't go for universal praise, right? That's true. Yeah, I think you need, to be, you need to be a little thick-skinned. You know, I, I think that you know, depending on even in your professional career, right? Um, negativity tends to have kind of an underlying reason so you know it's good to be a little thick skinned but sometimes the, the the point might be valid too so you yeah. need to kind of look at what you're getting a negative response for and then typically maybe how the negative negativity is expressed may not really be true to the underlying cause of the negativity either so you know you kind of got to do a little bit of digging deeper into it to see what the problem is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially if you hear it a lot, if it's only one person screaming. Right. So it's important too, as a student, to not take every criticism to heart. It's going to be to help improve, to make you a better gameplay programmer or designer or anything else that you're trying to do. It's just to help, especially at the beginning. If you're a beginner, ask those questions. Even if it's not the best question, just ask them. You'll get yeah. the answer. I saw a post in the uh, Facebook where somebody was asking questions and calling Stack Overflow like toxic or something like that. And it was just saying that he doesn't ask good questions. And it's like, I mean, you'll learn how to ask good questions with those responses. You'll learn to be better. To You just got to be thick-skinned. It's a, it's a tough world. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think I saw that post you're talking about, too. Um, I think some criticism can be a bit toxic i think as the recipient of the criticism you also need to kind of know when to weed through and probably ignore some of the feedback because some people just they have their internet legs and they're gonna be mean and insightful and so forth just because they can and typically those exact same comments that are super negative are not super constructive either. So you just need to blow past them and find the people who are actually trying to help you with your problem. You know, especially when you're posting questions or whatnot. You know, if they're not part of the solution, they're the problem. And the same thing could probably be said for a certain amount of negativity. If they're not offering anything, just ignore it. Move on. Move on to the person who is helping you. So there's this uh, comment about how game developer uh, studios aren't trusting their audience or the their fans because of the responses they get where it's like you should add this level and another group of fans are like oh you should add this type of design or it's just stuff where it's like conflicted and it's like what should they make and you end up making something that nobody wants but you should just make what you wanted to make in the beginning i think there's a certain 
healthy amount of feedback that can go into a product and a game specifically that can improve the quality of the game. But I mean, yes, yeah, so you can't be, if you're going to provide some feedback, you got to realize there's probably a lot of things that the developers thought of that never made it to the game because they didn't add anything to the game or the mechanics just didn't work out the way people thought they would. You know, there's a lot of games out there that you can sit there and say they should have done this, this, and this. And, you know, by the time you're done implementing all those things, the games can get overly complex or overly simplified. And it totally took away from what the game was meant to be. And, and really, the games that come to mind for that are... Uh, I don't know if any of you guys play like any of the Paradox Interactive games, like uh, Crusader Kings, Hearts of Iron, you know, those those strategy, grand strategy games. I don't want to get caught up in the inheritance of my kingdom and, and managing relations with a thousand other nobles in the game. It's just not a part of the game that I care about. It's just too micromanaged, and I'd rather just be more of a kingdom civilization for example on crusader kings mm -hmm. you know that's my personal opinion other people like having to do that but it's just like man i don't want a game that's going to take me a thousand hours to play it yeah i agree also uh games are get, will become outdated by the time you implement everything that everybody wants <laughs> right and yeah. you put everything in like well, for instance we got star wars battlefront 2 it's a game that people say should have come out later because it has no content which after playing it for a while, there's there's really not a lot of maps to the game, but the way they make the maps, I, for me, uh, it seems like it would take like a couple months to maybe, because it's just the amount of detail they put in these these maps, and then they have to do testing to make sure they get the levels balanced and everything like that. But it's like they at launch were known as like the worst game developers. They had the whole scandal, then they started having loot box debates and like, is it even right? Is it gambling and stuff like that? But now it seems like they've listened to the fans. So at this point, you can trust some of the fans, do what they want, and you end up producing the game or the game that was bad and now good and people love it. Like they have trailer that just came out like a couple months ago, got like a million plus views for a game that's been out for like two years. And people are playing it more now than ever. And it's like, it's complicated. There's a dichotomy of like who you should trust and who you shouldn't trust with this criticism. Yeah, and, and for them there's a big thing that it has canon Star Wars story. It has to fit the Disney release schedule as well. Mm -hmm. They probably have had a contract saying they should release between certain months. Mm -hmm. Right. So th they couldn't just hold it back, you know. Yeah. Well, now everybody's loving it. I'm loving it. They had it like Clone Wars stuff, and they added stuff they said they will never add because they're just like, you know what, you guys want it, we'll make it. Yeah, I need to buy it just for the story. So it's like five dollars now, but um, <laughs> it's worth it. It really is. It's so it's so cheap because people trashed on it that now it's like, it's it's so great that you can get it for like five dollars. And yeah, another game, No Man's it's, Sky. Yeah, that game was destroyed at launch. People and apparently like, now it's good, right? Oh, yeah, now it's amazing, apparently. And they're adding, like, VR stuff, so now you can do everything in VR. All for free, too. Free DLC, and people are loving it. So it's like, yeah. sure, you get all this negative criticism, and, and you'll get people who take that, and instead of being like, hey, you can do this to improve it, like, you guys are trash, you guys are horrible people, you should all die, we're gonna kill you. You suck. Yeah, like, all that stuff. But then you find the good, that the, basically... The key points that they're saying behind all that noise, and then you yeah. take that, you make it better, and you get a game that people like. Yeah, it's gotta totally like, a profession. Like, yeah, That's there a, should you, be. You can get some healthy criticism, right? You can get some good, good negative feedback. You can learn from something, but I mean, some of it can just not be appropriate either. Yeah, but even then, you can still some of the inappropriate stuff has some kind of reason to it. So, yeah. somewhere in there i don't disagree that it has a place necessarily but i think that the players sometimes can underestimate the impact that adding something could have yeah you know true. where it they don't really understand or at least think they understand the mechanics of the game and throwing in a throwing for take even battlefront 2 no i haven't played it you know but i did play battlefront 1 
a lot. You know, throwing in a different weapon could really change the game depending on what that kind of weapon is or a different ship or something, right? Just because it changes the balance, the gameplay balance that they've already worked on. So just to implement something because you can doesn't mean that it doesn't mean you're going to have to change a lot of other things to make it work properly. Mm -hmm. I just searched for Battlefront 2 and the first video that pops up, it's called... It's actually good now. Star Wars Battlefront 2. That's what I'm saying. Right. It's, it's insane. Yeah, I'm going to have to buy it. You yeah, know. it's worth it. And in there, Splurge, are nine, Splurge are nine bucks. Yeah. Oh, and you then, know, and as I, said, I played the first one. The first one was a good game. It didn't have a lot of content, but it came off of, you know, the uh, Battlefield series that didn't really have a lot of content either, right? Mm hmm. You know, they just had, you know, 10 maps and you just kind of rotated between them and that was the game you fought on them. But, but that was the whole concept. It was supposed to be a, a fast-paced game that kind of gave way to the modern versions of the, you know, Battle Royale style games. That's like the next generation version of these. These are much different in their design they were never meant to be building a base or anything like that they were just supposed to be meant to shoot back and forth kind of a capture the flag model and that's it yeah i mean if you look at the uh i think it's the first medal of honor on pc light assault assault it has six mm -hmm. maps yeah 